Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to share with you guys the process of putting together an HDR time-lapse. So that means you already did all the in field work, so you shot multiple pictures with different exposures. Uh, what we'll do in this video is post-processing. We merge the pictures into HDR images and create a time-lapse video out of these. And in this case we're only using Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop. So to start, just um, we're just going to bring the pictures into Lightroom. So to do that, just click Import and then search for the folder you want to work with, uh, where your photos are stored, of course. So for me, I'll work with these pictures I shot of a medieval chapel in southern France. And the first tip here is to always align your uh, thumbnails to rows of either three or six. So you have a good overview of whether the images are in the correct order so that we're not missing one. Then as you also might notice, the first and the last brackets look a bit different compared to all the other pictures. Um, this might be a problem with my camera, I'm not sure. Anyway, what I always do is just delete those brackets after importing them. So just to make sure that we're working with the pictures we want, uh, we want to create a timelapse with. All right, then make sure uh, everything's selected and all you gotta do is just click import. This might take a few minutes depending, of course, on the amount of images you want to import. Alright, so now that we have brought all photos into Lightroom, again, first thing I do is set the thumbnails to rows of six. It's just something I like to do to keep things organized. Alright, now that we've set the thumbnails, let's just scroll through all our images one more time. And you can see they're all you can definitely see the difference between exposures here. And we're left with 806 images. Alright, so back to the top. What we'll do now is select all images. And we do that by pressing Ctrl A, or on a Mac it's Command A. And then make sure they're all selected. And then right click on any picture and go to Stacking and then auto stack by capture time. Um, this will tell Lightroom to put all uh, pictures shot within two seconds, in this case, um, in a stack. And as you can see, it says zero unstacked, uh, which is a good thing because it's saying that there aren't any pictures unstacked. Um, now the first two are kind of messed up, I think. Uh, so I'll delete the, those two and then go to the end. Um, yeah, I'll, just to make sure, I'll delete the last one and the first two, so that I'm I'm a hundred percent sure I've got all the aligned, nicely aligned pictures. They're all the same. All right, so I've just deleted all the images I wanted to delete, um, and what you do now is select all images once again by Control A, and then right click on any image, go to Photo Merge this time and then click HDR. And Lightroom will then create HDR images out of all these brackets. Um, this can take quite long, depending again uh, on the amount of images you want, to, uh, you want to process here. So I'll just skip forward a bit and come right back to you guys. All right, so now that we have all our HDR images, um, you go to text and then go to the search bar and type in HDR. This will make uh, only the HDR images come up because that's what we're going to work with from now on. All right, so now is the time to edit your pictures. And uh, for that you go to the develop module I don't usually like to edit my HDR pictures in Lightroom. Um, I just use Premiere Pro to color grade them if I want. Normally I like the, I like the looks of HDR images uh, and I don't think they need much editing. The only thing I'll do now is just crop the image to a 69 aspect ratio 
so that it fits nicely in a 1080p video. Alright, so now that you've made your changes and edits, it's time to export the images from Lightroom and bring them, bring them into Photoshop. And to do so, we hit export at the bottom left of your screen. Um, I already have a preset called Photoshop Time Lapse, TL. Um, firstly, choose a folder where you want to store your images in. It just, can just be any folder as long as you can just find them back easily. I'll just make a new one and call mine uh, Photoshop Chapel. Okay, and then for the export settings, just follow along what I do here. And you can put the files in a subfolder if you want. And um, you should give the files a name. The computer will put the files in the correct order. I like to keep the quality at 100 and oh, it's important to export it as JPEG but there are not many other options in Lightroom but uh, I don't mess with the color or sizing just keep the original size and then just hit export and that might take a few minutes also um, again depending on the amount of files you want to export Alright, so after exporting, all the files are right where you wanted them to be as JPEGs. So what we'll do now is just um, yeah, import them into Adobe Photoshop. So we'll open up Photoshop. And in Photoshop, you go to File, Open, and then go to the folder where the JPEGs are stored. and then just click on the first one and then um, underneath the file name bar uh, you click uh, image sequence and this will bring up the whole sequence up uh, as a video already then you can choose the frame rates it's important to know your frame rates um, 24 or 30 are the ones I mostly go with uh, 24 is a bit slower motion than 30 so if you uh, know you have like fast fast clouds or something or fast motion in your time lapse and you want it a bit more slowed down um, then you can go for 24 uh, or if your video is 24 or 30 um, just go with the frame rate your video will be in okay so you can play the video now um, it just needs to render like the video playback will be really laggy before uh, before it has rendered. You notice that that there's a lot of flickering in this video. That's the I guess the only downsides to this way. Uh, for that, I prefer to use LR time lapse. It's one of the best the flicker uh, programs for time lapses, and it's pretty easy to use too. Um, anyway, there are still ways to uh, deflicker the video in Premiere Pro or After Effects, but um, the ones I use is LR time lapse mostly because it's just the most effective and professional way to do it. When you're ready to export, just go to File, Export, and Render Video. Now in these settings, there's not much you need to change. Um, just give your time lapse a name, of course. Um, format. I'd like to keep it um, H.264. Preset high quality. Um, it's 4K, of course. The frame rate is, is already set at the beginning, so you don't need to worry about that. And then just click Render, and that's basically it. Your video will render now. Let's take a look at the final result.